gonna show you a really fun and actually fairly simple drum fill that you're going to be able to develop and just take into all sorts of different directions in your own playing and really see how you're gonna be able to apply this in your songwriting for different drum fills and especially for things like soloing and stuff like that. Now I say it's simple, but I didn't say it's necessarily easy and there's a big difference here. So this lesson is actually dedicated to my friend Barb the Animal who plays a custom DW kit almost as big as mine with a double rack system and everything. I think it's just nuts, it's pretty awesome. But uh, we were talking about the song Painkiller from, uh, by Judas Priest. The drum fill that he does at the end of the song that starts really slow and just builds up in speed and you know it's doing all this crazy stuff. I'm going to show you exactly what's going on with that. Because a pattern like that is actually, like I said, it's really, really simple. Not necessarily easy to execute, but I mean, mechanically and structurally how it's put together, it's, it's really, really simple. It's just, I mean, it's a very linear pattern, just straight 16th notes, hand foot combination. You know, nothing really funky by way of polyrhythms and, you know, mixed stickings, all this other kind of stuff going on. But it, it's the voicing that is what really makes it interesting and, and it's how you can take a pattern like that that is really simple and make it sound like it's way more complicated and intricate than it actually is by way of mechanics, you know, what you're actually doing with your body. So I'm going to show you explain it with the brushes here so that I can, you know, kind of talk and explain as, a, you know, kind of at the same time here. But uh, there's really only two things that you need to master, at least in the example of the, the painkiller drum fill, there's only two things you need to master you need to be able to pull that off at the end. The first is just the first bar leading into that pattern and then from there on in it's just a repeating pattern that he's just kind of accelerating and then to finish it off he does like a little uh, roll around the kits and a couple different combinations but once you get this pattern down and comfortable with and you're really switching up the voicings, you're gonna be able to take it and just develop completely into your own thing. And I mean, just run with it. You can have a lot of fun with this kind of uh, pattern and drum fill. So with what he's doing in the song, like I said, there's two things you need to master. The first thing is just, it starts off with a really quick little 16th note triplet. And then from there, it just, I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's just an alternating hand foot combination that's very, very linear. For the sake of simplicity, at least for explaining it in this example right now, we're going to uh, count it out as if it, it was an eighth note pattern. Like I said, just for the sake of simplicity, I mean, once it gets really going and stuff like that, I mean, I personally would at least count it out as a sixteenth note, you know, a handful combination. But just so you can understand, um, you know, like kind of the, the structure and, and note values and how it lines up by way of the beats and the bars. So how it starts, it's actually starting, if we're counting it a 4-4, four, four, the pattern starts with that little quick quick little 16th note triplet on the 4 and. And then from there, like I said, it's just straight 8th notes. So if we were to count it out, and like I said, by, by triplet, what I mean, just to make sure we're all clear on that, by a 16th note triplet, would actually be like sextuplets. So compared to just, uh, if we're just doing a really slow tempo, if we're doing just like an 8th note triplet, right? 16th note triplet would just be six, so double that. Okay, so like I said, it's starting on the end of the four with a really quick little 16th note triplet. Okay, and one, and one, that's it. So if, like I said, if we're gonna count it out as an eighth note pattern, it's simply gonna be like this as far as what's actually going on for that first bar, okay? One, two, three, four. That's it. So the first bar is a little bit different than the rest of the pattern, just because of the way it starts off on the and. It kind of, uh, you know, it's it's a little bit, it, it almost sounds or feels kind of wonky when you're first doing it compared to the west, the rest of the pattern. Because the rest of the pattern, like I said, it's very, very linear. It's, it's structurally very simple. So if you can master just that really quick little triplet in the beginning, beginning there, and then with the, the hand and foot combination, your goal. Now I'm showing you just with one foot, obviously just by, so I can keep the tempo on the left foot. I don't think you'd be able to do this pattern with, uh, with one foot <laughs> as it ramps up. I mean, it's pretty fast when it gets going. It'd be pretty difficult to do that with, uh, with obviously just one foot. Now he's not doing it like that anyway, he's got a double kick. But uh, like I said, just for the sake of being able to help you understand the timing of it. So after that first bar on the, so the four and, Okay, from there on in, it's just a straight four and four combination between the hands and the feet, but it's the voicing that is what kind of makes it sound sort of all over the place and makes it sound a little more complicated than it actually is. The voicing is just simply this. So floor tom, two snares, rack tom, 
four kick, okay? So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, that's it. That's the whole pattern right there. From there, it's just a matter of being able to ramp up the speed and then you can really start to change the voicing. So I'm gonna get rid of the brushes here and show you a few examples, but uh, like I said, I mean, that this combination or this pattern, it's, it's one of those things where it's so simple structurally, not so really easy to execute and pull off, but once you get comfortable with just this handful combination, you can turn it into so many different things and really make it your own and apply it in so many different ways by changing the voicing. That's where you can really kind of just, you know, expand and explode your creativity is by taking one pattern and trying different voicings around the kit because it makes it sound like a completely different pattern that's like totally original and I mean it's just you can have so much fun with it especially when you get into soloing and stuff like that. So I'll show you a few examples here and then uh, you know just start slow get really comfortable with being solid between you know going from hands to feet as far as the forward floor make sure your timing is really tight between the two and then just start playing around with the voicing and have a lot of fun with it.